Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to the Tommy Unfiltered show. Today, we're going to talk about addiction. And I want to know how long you have been sober. So I'm going to tell you guys how long, how long I've been sober. Uh, let's see. From hard drugs, it has, uh, I'm real quick, uh, today is Tuesday, April 30th, 2024. Um, I'm just over here waiting to get a dock door, which they are already 41 minutes past my appointment time right over here, right there, to the left where you see those trucks. After I get unloaded here, I'll be heading down to uh, another town about an hour away. I'm in North Carolina to get loaded, and then it's off to Omaha, Nebraska. So, let's see. I stopped doing hard drugs in uh, November 30th, 2000. Five. So what is that? So 2005 minus 2023, that was 18 years. So this November 2024 will be 19 years. Oh my gosh. I can't believe that. Can you guys, where has the time gone? 18 years and a half, right? So, uh, December, January, February, March, April. This month will be May. So, 18 years and five months since I did any hard drugs. Actually, since I did any drugs, period, right? Um, actually, no. Uh, back in... 2018 um, when I got off parole I smoked weed one time just one time and the only reason I smoked weed was because um, it was legal it was the first time ever in my life I was able to legally do a drug right yes weed is a drug I don't care what anybody says so I did uh, smoke weed uh, one time back in 2018. Now, weed was never my thing, okay? My drug of choice, since you guys are going to ask, is meth. Um, yep, I loved it. And uh, we'll get into how I started doing meth here in a minute. But let's talk about... Okay, so um, then uh, about... So, so I drank for a while. So real quick, 18 years sober off the hard drugs... But I, there's a disclaimer there. I was in prison for almost 12 years. The first 12 years of that, I was in prison. So let's see. Um, I got out in 17. So this, this June will be seven years since I've been out of prison. So I've been out of prison six and a half years, drug free, except for that one time I smoked weed. So meth free for 18 years, right? So we could say drug free. Uh, we could say fairly drug free, right? Because I only smoked weed that one time. So drug free for uh, seven and a half, or no, I'm sorry, six and a half years. Six and a half years. Seven years this June, I'll be out of prison and have not done any drugs except for weed that one time, which I don't even count. But so the alcohol, I was drinking fairly regularly on a weekly basis and my my alcohol of choice was vodka right now uh what year is it it's uh so 22 so in 22 february of 22 i quit drinking vodka so no hard liquor for the last two years and like three months right and then beer Let's see. The beer, I was drinking about two or three times a month until a month ago. 
I actually quit drinking beer too. Um, now, will I still drink beer from time to time? Yes, absolutely I will. Um, but I'm talking about like maybe three times, four times a year. So like Memorial Day, 4th of July, maybe New Year's. Not not even New Year's. I like summer holidays. New Year's used to be cool. I used to go out and, and like to party until the ball dropped. But I'm just, I don't like the nighttime partying anymore. It's just, but here's my problem. It doesn't matter whether I go to sleep at nine o'clock at night or I go to sleep at two in the morning. I promise you I'm going to be awake at six in the morning. And that's the problem with me partying at night now is because I will be up at at six o'clock regardless. So if I go out for New Year's and I I go to sleep at two or three in the morning, I'm going to be up at six and I'm going to be miserable all day. So I just do my partying. If I'm going to party, I party during the day. Now I go to the lake, I go to the river, I go to the car shows, um, I go to car races. Uh, what what else can you do during the day? Um, I go to uh, pool parties at casinos and resorts and stuff like that. I do I do my partying in the daytime now, so I could still get to sleep. You know, get a full night's sleep, bounce up the next day, and be ready to go. You know what I mean? So, oh, here's my door. Hold on. All right, so they just called me to my door. I knew, <laughs> I knew as soon as I started making a video, they were gonna call me to the door. Hey, that's how it goes, right? So, where are we at? Uh, beer, partying. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll do some partying once in a while. I'll drink some beer once in a while. Uh, I, I still have a shot of vodka f- here and there once in a blue moon. I probably, in the last year, I probably had like two shots maybe. But, so that's where I'm at. Damn, this guy's reefer next to me is loud. You guys hear that? So anyway, all right, so that's how long I've been sober. I've been sober over 18 years. It'll be 19 years this November. Sober off the meth and uh, pretty much everything else. I mean, the alcohol... For those of you that alcohol is a problem, I'm I'm not trying to be insensitive to you, but uh, I don't have the problem. That's not my issue. So I will continue to drink from time to time. My issue is uh, the with the drinking, the reason I've slowed way down on the drinking is one, I just feel better. I mean, I'm 46 years old, right? So when I party now, it affects me a lot more the next day then it, it affected me just five years ago, you know? So that and the cost, I mean, it's nothing, you know, if you want to go out and have a good atmosphere and drink three beers, you know, you're looking at eight bucks a pop. So, you know, by the time it's all said and done with a tip, you know, every time I was drinking, I was spending 25 to 35 bucks, right? And I was drinking every weekend for a minute. So, I mean, back in my vodka days, shit, I was drinking almost every night uh, for a few month period back then. But uh, so, yeah, to save the money, to do more useful things, more efficient things with my time. Right. Because if I'm sober on a Friday night, I could be making a YouTube video. I could be researching a topic that I want to uh, learn. I could be researching a new skill. I could be working on a car. I could be getting something more productive done with my time right so then then there's the health aspects I mean believe it or not no matter what you think uh, alcohol is poison right it does not do any good for your brain it does not good do good for your body I mean maybe a glass of red wine once in a blue moon yeah okay I know there's health benefits to that so where did I get started with my drug addiction. So I was probably about 14 and 14, yeah, 13, 14, I started smoking weed. I think uh, maybe a little later than that, maybe it was between my freshman and my sophomore year. So it could have been, it could have been 14 and a half I don't quite remember, 
let's just call it 14. So I started smoking weed when I was 14, hanging out with the skaters, hanging out with the BMX bikers, hanging out at the beach in Southern California. So I started doing whatever, whatever, what most kids were doing back then in the late 80s, early 90s, we were smoking that weed, right? So weed wasn't really my thing. I mean, I would get so high off such a little bit of weed that I was useless, right? I was useless. I couldn't go out. I couldn't skateboard. I couldn't ride a bike. That's all it was, was getting high and making out with chicks, getting high and fooling around with the girls, you know? and just laying on the couch and watching TV and eating food. That's literally all it was for me, right? For me. So I think uh, right around 15 and a half years old, maybe, maybe approaching 16 years old, I was riding my bike no, yeah, I must have been. I must have been about uh, right before I turned sixteen, about four or five months before I turned sixteen. I'm riding my bike. I'm going to my boy's house. Uh, we we were into stealing cars back then, right? So I'm riding to my boy's house, and we're about to go steal some cars that night. Well, on the way, I stopped at one of my neighbor's houses that I used to talk to. Now, my neighbor's like 26 years old, 25, 26 years old at the time, right? And uh, he was working on his car and, and uh, my boy called me. He's like, hey, I'm not going to be home until this time, this time, whatever. You know, I, give me like three, four more hours. So I stopped at the neighbor's house. I started hanging out with the neighbor. I drank a little bit of beer. I didn't, it really wasn't my thing. I didn't like it. He's like, hey, you ever, you ever done meth? You ever done crystal? We were calling it, we were calling it crystal back in the day, right? You ever done crystal, man? You ever done crystal? He's like, you party? I was like, oh, I smoke weed from time to time. He's like, you ever tried crystal? I was like, no, nah, what is it? And he's like, it's like cocaine, but it lasts way longer. And I was like, shit, okay, let's try it. Well, needless to say, I went on a 12 year fucking run after that, right? Committing crimes, it's like meth is Meth is my drug of choice. A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people probably won't like it. Um, but basically, meth gives you energy to do whatever you want to do. And you don't have any cares in the world. Like, it's a dopamine hit like no other uh, in your life, right? Now, I was, or, I was always into that dopamine, right? I was into that adrenaline. I was into go-karts, mini bikes, dirt bikes cars, skateboards, bicycles. That was my style, right? I wanted to be up and I wanted my heart to be beating out of my chest and I wanted to be running around town talking to the ladies, you know, stealing shit, doing jumps and tricks and all that. That was me, right? So as soon as I got introduced to the meth, it was basically all over, right? It was all over. Now, luckily for me, I guess this is a double-edged sword what I'm about to tell you guys, but Every time I, whoa, whoa, my magnet, or not my magnet, my, uh, my suction cup came undone. That's a trip. That thing's a beast. I don't know why it came undone. I probably didn't have the plunger all, all the way in. So every time I would get high, starting at like 15 and a half, I would go on like a one week binger or two week binger. That was it. That was all I can get under my belt before I'd get popped and go to jail, right? So I started going to juvenile hall when I was like 16 and a half. No, it would have been right before I turned 16. Right about when I started doing the meth, I started getting getting hit for stealing cars. Um, I got one assault case when I was a juvenile, but mostly going to, going to jail for cars and, and probation violations. So like I got popped for like one car, got put on probation. No, I'm sorry. I was on assault. I was on probation for the assault case. But the problem with being on probation, especially back in the eighties and nineties was everything you did, you were going back for like a lot, like right now they're a lot more lenient on probation. Um, and then parole is even more lenient than that, depending on where you live. 
but I was going to jail like every few weeks for probation violations or going on the run or not checking into my PO or whatever. So basically what happened to me was I would go on like a one or a two week meth binge and I would catch a bunch of time or I'd go on the run and I'd get locked up for a probation violation. I'd be down for a couple months and then a um, couple months here, a couple months there. And then I would get hit for something big. So like my big case when I was a juvenile was uh, a bunch of stolen cars and high speed chases. And I wound up doing two years. I got four years for that. And I did two years, six months for that. And then as an adult, I got out from that case. And my first adult case, I went on like a two week binge and uh, went to the county. And then I went on a two week binge and went to the county again. And then I went on like a shit, a one week binge. And then I went to prison for five years. And then I got out of prison and I was, I did okay for a, a little bit. And then, uh, I went on like a shit, like a 60 day binge. I went on like a 62 to 60 day binge and I also went on a 60 day robbery spree. <laughs> yeah. Robbed a bunch of banks and all this other shit, right? So, but you can see how like a lot of meth addicts that stay on the street and do meth for years and years and years on end, like they're all fucked up, right? I feel sorry for them. Like their teeth are falling out their head and their face is all tore up. Their skin's all tore up. I feel real bad for those people, but that wasn't me. Like I would, like I said, I'd go on a binge and then I'd get locked up for years and years on end. So I never, luckily, but unluckily, I never really got a long time on meth. So I don't think that it changed my brain chemistry like it does a lot of people. But... That's basically my story. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to get too detailed into any meth stories because I, there's other channels on YouTube that that tell war stories like that. That's not, that's just not really my style. It's not really my vibe. But I, I did need to tell you that story to tell it. So, so on and off, on and off, I did hard drugs. Well, just meth. Actually, I did some cocaine um, in there too. But, so I did the uppers. I did the stimulants for, I would say, 11 and a half years. On and off for 11 and a half years. But the vast majority of that 11 and a half years, I was locked up. So, I went down once as, I went down big once as a juvenile. Um, and then I went down big twice as an adult. So that's my story. So 18 and a half years sober, unless you want to count the one time I smoked weed. Um, so, but 18 and a half years off the hard drugs, let's put it that way. I mean, Weed was not and continues to not be a problem for me. Alcohol is not really a problem uh, to me other than the fact that I think it it makes me unhealthy and I spend too much money when I'm messing with the alcohol. But yeah, man, 18 and a half years sober, hard drug sober, man. So that's my story. And uh, for me, it got easier every day. Every year that goes by, it gets easier. I mean, I have absolutely no desire to do the hard drugs anymore. And as far as the weed, weed's not really my jam. And I can't smoke weed anyway because of my CDL because I'm a truck driver. So, yeah, that's that's where I'm at in my life right now. And, uh, you know, if you guys are in your 20s or 30s or whatever, but, you know, no matter what age you are, but specifically if you're in your 20s or 30s and you're listening to me talk about this, Dude, the drugs, I don't, even if you're a pot smoker and if you think you could function and 
if you think you're productive smoking weed every day, um, good for you. But uh, I would be willing to put some money on it that if you got clean and 100% clean, 100% sober and healthy, maybe just knocking back a little alcohol once in a blue moon, um, or maybe just smoking a bowl like once a month at the most, I guarantee you, you would be more efficient, you would be more clear-minded, you'd be more motivated in life for the most part. I mean, I know there's those people that are just outside of the norm, just way outside of the norm, and that's you guys. Good on you guys for, for what you can do with having intoxicating substances in your system all the time. But if you're looking for reasons on why you might not be productive right now, why you might not have a whole lot of motivation, why you might just not feel great about yourself, about your body, about your physical health. It might be because you've got too much poison in your system. Too much drugs, too much alcohol, too much bad food. I mean, too much junk food, too much fast food, right? But yeah, 18 and a half years of hard drug sobriety, narcotic sobriety. Where are you guys at? Comment down below. I'd like to hear a little bit about you guys that follow me, um, subscribers. And those of you that just stumbled across my video and you don't subscribe, this I talk about some of this stuff. I talk about some of life. I talk about some of finances. But I'm just, I'm trying to live my life on my terms, not on anybody else's terms. I'm just trying to make it out here like everybody else trying to fight this inflation, you know, trying to fight the high cost of everything, trying to figure out how to make more money, right? That's the key to all, most of life's problems, most of life's problems. The key is just figure out how to make more money or figure out how to have less bills, bills that aren't so expensive. So that's the kind of stuff that I talk about on this channel. If you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the little half-assed story I told you about myself, hit that like button for me. All right, see you guys later.